when you're buying property, the previous owner also used it as a rental property. You can't really expect them to keep it that nice. And frankly, you kind of see that in this particular unit. There's a lot of things that they neglected or they tried to find the cheap solution. And it really depends on what type of landlord that you want to be, right? If you want to be a good landlord, you invest in your properties, make sure that it looks nice, it's well taken care of. There's a lot for you to do, right? But it's a choice. So one bedroom condo with a dedicated kitchen area, which is actually quite rare to find nowadays. And a dining and living room area. LED lights already installed. Decently spacious, 650 square feet, including the window coverings, which is nice. Not all of the units actually have it. Here's the bedroom. Pretty generous size for nowadays. And then here's the wash. So this property stage, trying to make it look a little nicer when it was listed for sale. And I remember even the first time going through this property, I didn't notice a lot of these small details. Behind this painting on the wall, that was actually where they mounted the TV. And I didn't notice that until I came in for a second inspection. So there was gaping holes there. I asked the seller to see what they could do and they eventually put some uh, spark into it, filled it a little bit, but still ugly, still not a pleasant sight. When you're purchasing a property and you see that it's staged, you want to look behind all the paintings, right? You want to look behind the paintings, see are they covering anything up, whether it's behind these couches, beneath the rugs, right? Everywhere. You, you just want to be able to double check that. Because there's probably a reason why they put a painting there, why they put the couch there. And even if not, oftentimes whenever new tenants move in, they may damage parts of the unit, right? Because when people move in, sometimes when they're moving a big couch, moving a TV, moving a cabinet, whatever it is, sometimes they might accidentally damage the property. Like, for example, what is this? This is taped up. You can just tell it wasn't really taken care of either by the last tenant, last owner. To me, it doesn't matter. Um, ultimately, it's both of them. Some details like dings on the walls. These things, caulking should generally fix, although your paint will not be matching. And then there's minor things like that as well. Notice here in the kitchen as well, as much as there is upgraded stainless steel appliances, which is not standard in this building, you will notice, look at the light fixture. It's missing the glass coverings around each light bulb. And if I turn off the lights here, notice how this one, that one right there, has rusted more. So I'll probably have to replace that. That's probably gonna be 200 bucks. But at least the appliances are nice and upgraded here. Another thing that I found out earlier is things like that. I believe that's just oil stains. I don't think it's anything more. It doesn't um, feel too much too much moisture there. Um, not much moisture, but I am very curious as to why that is dented from the inside. This is not matching with the rest of the house. I also know that this is not original. Um, the toilet seat is also at a odd angle and you can actually move that. You can tell that's not truly on center. I don't know what they ended up doing there. And let me show you this. You know, this is part of a list of things to fix. Look, three light bulbs, only two of them work. One of them doesn't even have a bulb. These door handles don't match. This one had to be replaced. They probably ended up looking for what was the cheapest way to do certain things. That's the reality of purchasing a property that was previously used as a rental. Luckily, most of the big things, I don't really see too, too much damage. Like windows are usually a big concern. Um, they have the window coverings, all of it's there. You know, one thing that I am glad is that 
the flooring is not damaged. Usually with tenanted properties or properties that's used for rentals, the flooring is usually uh, in very rough shape, especially laminate flooring, because then water comes in, you know, whether they spill water, water from the balcony or whatever it is, the flooring is always susceptible to water damage. And then that's when you'll see peeling between the seams of the laminate and then it gets really ugly you can see it from far away there is a little bit of that not too too much so i am glad about that you know i think overall this unit is in decent shape um is it in the best shape definitely not but is it passable for what it is? Yes. So let's go through the deal a little bit. I was able to secure a three-year fixed at 4.84%, which is a relatively good interest rate for what the rates are right now. I think if we go variable, it'll be north of six. Uh, most conventional loans, the low 5% interest rates. I purchased this property for $20,000 below list price. I'll probably have to contribute a little bit of cash flow and a little bit of net income over the next couple of years. And that will cost me roughly $20,000. So the way that I see it is over three years time, if I put in another $20,000, which is roughly purchasing at list price, would I be happy? And I think the answer to that is yes, I will be happy if in three years time, I was able to pay the list price as it is today. There's a couple of fixes probably to put into this unit. I think we talked about earlier, the light fixture that probably needs to be replaced in the kitchen. I think that roughly run about $200. There's some drywall that needs to be fixed. There's holes in a couple of spots. The light fixtures in the hallway, the living room, bathroom area probably also needs to be replaced. Maybe $100 each. I don't think all of them need to be replaced, but at least two of them. And at that point, you might as well just do all of them. You know, the bedroom is really, really good shape. The washroom, I'm a little bit concerned. The light fixture there probably needs to be changed as well. That might cost, you know, another $200. The bathroom shower head also needs to be replaced. That one will probably be, you know, 70 bucks, 100 bucks to replace that was leaking a little bit. And then the bathtub, the bathtub I'm a little bit more concerned about. You can tell the previous tenant and the owner might not have necessarily cared about the unit as much. You, know, you see that it's uh, the drains missing the cap. So you can't even you know take a bath there right now. And the bathtub, there was you know some caulking stuck on it. And I think there was a spot of rust as well. It's a rust that I'm worried about. I'm gonna go search if there's a way to get rid of the rust. I think worst case, I think that might be the most expensive part is if we take out the bathtub and potentially put in a new bathtub. Or are there the ones that allow you to build over it? This is a really, really well-managed building. Uh, maintenance fees of around low 400, mid 400s, um, which for a building this age of about 16, 17 years is actually a really good deal. This building's reserve fund also has $9 million, which is significantly more than what most buildings and most condos would have, especially at this age. Very positive about the maintenance fees moving forward. But generally, I know this is a good building. It's a good maintenance fee. I already have another unit in this building as well. So, you know, it's a good area where I think in three years time to pay 550, which is roughly the all in cost, what it would be. I thought it was a good deal, a good place to invest with the future subway line extending all the way up here. So uh, that's why I'm in this. This area is undergoing development. There will be a subway extension coming into this area which will give this area a big boost. It's right off the highway. So you can just take the highway and drive all the way downtown. It's, it's a connection point. Uh, yeah, so good areas. This is a decent floor, decent view. You can see the CN Tower from here. There is also more condo development, so I am a little bit worried of that, where there could be a little bit more supply over that period of time. But I think, you know, those new developments, the prices for those um, typically start at a premium. So for those that are probably starting at the low 600s anyways, even if I rent it out, my philosophy is that I still want the option and to be willing to live in these units myself. I hold myself to a pretty high standard. So I always pick a unit with good view, good space, good layout, kitchen countertop or kitchen island is something that I always aim for. You know, I'm not saying it's necessarily the best investment strategy, but I can always say, hey, you know, if I want to move into it, if my parents want to move into it, if 
in the future my kids want to move into it, I want to make sure that the units are good, units are uh, practical and worthwhile.